Today's video is about a hot topic in software engineering, testing in production. I'm sure quite a few of you guys have opinions about testing in prod and testing in certain stages and testing in general. So let's get into it. I'm talking about this topic today because a few days ago I found a really interesting article about testing in production. This is a topic which I have talked a lot about in the past with colleagues from work and colleagues from university. And um, I'll give you the main points of this article and then I'll add my opinion to it. Argument number one is you are already testing in production. So this is certainly true for a lot of software projects and a lot of software companies because everyone is aware that um, this last step, so going from a development stage to a prod, to prod um, is the one step with the biggest potential of breaking stuff and so with the biggest risk. So even if you are taking um, shadow traffic from your prod fleets and you redirect it to some development stage uh, or some um, isolated servers so that you can test with real traffic without affecting um, your customers, um, it's not the same. So only prod is prod. Argument number two for testing in production is everyone else does it. So that's certainly true uh, for companies like Facebook, um, Google, Amazon or Netflix. Um, they all have very short iterations and they, they push features on a daily basis. So um, they do test in production and if companies like Amazon can do it, why shouldn't you? Argument number three of this article is it's probably fine. So what they mean is you're doing integration and unit tests beforehand, maybe even some end-to-end -end testing on a development stage. So what you should be pushing to prod is probably fine. I'm not sure if I like the statement because even if you find 99% of the bugs beforehand, this 1% uh, could still bring down your whole system and affect your customer base extremely. So. Um, What's true is that you should be practicing failure and you should embrace chaos and failure um, because this is your real savior. If you can uh, monitor and uh, detect failures early and if you can bring up backup systems really quickly, you can do rollbacks really quickly uh, from some um, erroneous uh, push. This is what saves you as a company and saves the customer from uh, a lot of stress and your system is not working. Argument number four from that article is you have bigger problems. So with problems they mean your uh, actual business and the, the value you're bringing to the customer is defined by uh, pushing new features, uh, developing new stuff and getting ahead of your competition. So of course Maintenance of your systems, reliability and availability is extremely important and it's one of the most important uh, aspects of your business. So it, it brings a lot of value, but if you fall behind because you iterate too slowly and your competitors get ahead of you because they uh, invent and uh, innovate faster, um, you will be falling behind. Now all these four points from this article are valid, but let me add my opinion about it. I think the big point uh, we should get across is maintaining a beta or alpha environment, so a staging environment before prod is very expensive. So bringing it up is pretty easy, but keeping it in sync with production is hard. And it gets harder and it gets exponentially harder as your system grows, uh, as the dependencies grow. And especially over the years, um, when, when people leave which uh, did parts of the system, um, it's getting harder and harder to understand what parts are needed uh, for the system to run. So why not take that time uh, you invest in keeping that development environment up? Uh, why not invest that time into feature development? Is this maybe a smarter approach? Does that mean we should all throw away our beta and development stages? Probably not. Uh, but it does make sense to think about when to stop testing in the development stage and how to maintain the development stage. Um, two things for this. One is you should stop at a certain point when you catch 80 or 90% of 
your bugs while you develop a feature. So you develop a feature, you take uh, that piece of code, you push it to a development stage and you start debugging there, uh, you run integration tests and after, uh, after a certain amount of time, as I said about if you feel like this is 80 or 90 percent of uh, bugs you detected, stop there. Because at this point um, the bugs per minute ratio, so to say, skyrockets. So it will take you a lot more time uh, to find those last 10% of bugs and the last few bugs you probably never find. So this is the time to stop and um, take your feature and put it onto a prod stage because eventually you'll have to find those uh, last percent, uh, last 10% of bugs, but don't do it on a demo environment where um, you can't be sure that those same 10% apply to a prod environment. So take them, put it to prod, um, somehow put some safeguards around it so that your customers are not affected and test your stuff there. Second point, how to maintain this development environment. So we said we, we need to find 90% of bugs in a development environment, but uh, how do we keep this development environment as close to the prod environment as possible? So the goal has to be the development environment resembles prod uh, extremely closely. So what you could do, this is a, an approach uh, many companies do, is um, from time to time, at a certain day in the week, for example, the development environment gets scratched completely and you take a fresh copy from prod and you put it on those hosts or on those machines as development environment or development stage. Um, this is something which doesn't take a lot of time. You're not trying to catch up with prod all the time and it ensures that your development environment is, for example, maximum one week behind prod. Um, you could even do this nightly, for example, but then you will have to think about how to run integration tests, which, um, or maybe even load tests, which, which should be running uh, for many hours or a couple of days even. Okay, this is today's video. All I said and uh, all the stuff I brought to you by this article is to be taken with a grain of salt. Um, we're talking in very broad terms here and every project in this world is different and every piece of software is different. Um, my experience comes a lot from distributed systems and from web applications and web development. Um, this could look very differently if we're talking about embedded systems, for example, software in cars or software in the medical sector. So it's just my opinion. It's a one way to look at it. Let's get the discussion started in the comments. Subscribe to this channel to get more videos like this. My name is Roman Lopez and this is Success in Tech.